I got troubleshooting my old pickup truck. I went on vacation for a month and my wife broke my pickup truck. So I got her in there. All right, try to crank it. Nothing? Nothing. Make sure it's in park. Try to crank it. All right. Let me open the hood and see what's going on. All right. First thing I do is see if I got any voltage in my battery. See, she killed my battery. I got 12.6 some odd volts in the battery, which is good. I'm going to tell her to crank it with me measuring the battery voltage. Crank it. The voltage drops when I move it from the post of the battery to the terminal. Let me explain what's going on. There is corrosion between this post and this terminal. She's holding it in the crank position. I still got full battery voltage between my two posts. While she's still holding it in the crank position, when I move my meter here, the voltage drops considerably. I bought this terminal in a hurry one time, and this is not, it's some sort of plated lead. Metals have a nobility, and the more noble metal will corrode the less noble metal. The more noble metal here is attacking the lead here and creating corrosion between the two. It takes three things to create corrosion. You need two dissimilar metals, which I've got. You need moisture, water, electrolyte, you know, battery acid, and you need oxygen. If I was to eliminate any one of those three things, corrosion can't happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this terminal and she's going to start. I knew it will. George? George, do you concur with my diagnosis? He's, he's probably taking mama's side. She didn't do nothing wrong with what George is saying. George is kind of a butt kisser anyways. Ain't you, George? You're mama's boy. Starter needs a lot of amps. System's 12.6 something volts, whatever. Is the amperage's amount ability for it to flow. Let's just put it that way. If these bill rush the amperage, all the electrons in the bill rush down to that starter to spin it. And if there's a roadblock, which is the corrosion, it's not gonna be able to get through. And you know, it might be able to get through to, enough will get through to light up a light bulb or what have you. But not enough to crank the starter. All right, I clean the terminal off, clean the corrosion off, put a new terminal on. Make sure there's no corrosion on here, which there really isn't. Your ground also needs to be really good. Just your positive needs to be good and your ground needs to be real good. And your ground cable mount bolts directly to the frame somewhere. And if if you have the same problem, we found the problem here of the voltage drop. But wherever that problem exists, whether it's here or on the ground to the frame or connection to the terminal will be, you'll be able to tell with the meter by measuring both sides. I'm gonna smear grease on there. So what's that grease do? That grease keeps the oxygen from getting to it. See, it's one of the three things that needed to cause corrosion, oxygen, electrolyte, dissimilar metals. The negative needs it too, but I'm just trying to impress you with this one. Crank it up. Ta -da! Just a little explanation on how you can troubleshoot corrosion, like you saw, hopefully you saw, the voltage drop between the two metals that had the corrosion in between them. This terminal, Hopefully you can see that crap in the inside there. It's this coated, plated metal, whatever this piece of crap is. It ain't ever going on anything I own ever again. So, this is a starter that is very similar to the starter that is in, that is in the pickup truck that I was having problems starting. Just thought I would, 
I just thought I'd go a little bit further and explain to you how the starter circuit works. The wire from the battery goes directly to the starter. From there, another wire will tie into the vehicle harness in order to energize all the other circuits in the vehicle. It usually passes through what they call a fuse link or a heavy duty fuse put there to protect the wiring harness from a short. There's also a relatively heavy wire somewhere in the system that ties to a solenoid that will be used to energize the starter. Wiring from the harness will pass through the key switch. When the key switch closes, electricity will flow through it to the safety switch, which is either neutral safety or the clutch pedal safety on the clutch pedal. It will energize that solenoid I talked about a minute ago. When it energizes, its contacts will close and allow a circuit that is capable of handling a little heavier amperage than the key switch to pass through to the starter's solenoid. And as it energizes, its contacts close, allowing the heavy amperage draw from the battery to pass through it to the motor in the starter, causing the motor to turn. The motor, the starter is grounded directly to the block and electricity flows through the block and the frame or whatever back to the negative post of the battery. Remember, if you love life and learning new things, goaimless.com.